Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be making another fact video for old school RuneScape. There is just so much out there to learn about the game that I am on to episode number 7 or 8 and there are still things that I have never heard of before. I'm going to be going over any interesting lore, interesting tips or facts about the game that you probably don't know about. Now like I said I made a few videos like this in the past so if uh, some of the more well-known facts aren't on this list they are most likely in previous videos. Some of these facts will actually be useful to your everyday gameplay like usability tips, quality of life things, but for the most part they're going to be little easter eggs left by the developer as well as other little fun things you can do in the game that you may not know about. Anyway I hope you enjoyed the video and let's get started. Okay, so we all know about pets. Pets being one of the rarest items in the entire game. Uh, frequently, players will not even get one going from level 1 to 99 in the skill. However, there's actually a hidden mechanic in the game that actually kicks in at a certain point to prevent you from getting too ridiculously unlucky and getting the pet. If you go all the way from 0 experience to 200 million experience without ever receiving the pet, uh, you will get a 15 times multiplier on the pet drop rate, uh, I believe just for scaling pets, which gives you a much higher chance of actually receiving it. I never knew about this mechanic in the game, but it's been confirmed by a few different J mods. Obviously, this isn't a very common occurrence. Not getting a pet before 200 million experience is extremely unlucky, but if you happen to be a select few people who have had such terrible luck, you'll be helped out in the end to hopefully finally get that pet at a 15 times higher chance. Now in RuneScape, there are a ton of unobtainable items. Uh, one of the more infamous ones, or two at least, uh, is the Old Key as well as the Elixir of Everlasting. Both were added in with the addition of the Taste of Hope quest, and a lot of people have speculated that they have importance or significance in a future quest. And with the recent announcement of the new Mauritania quest line, it is very likely that these two items actually will have a purpose. For the Elixir of Everlasting, according to Mod West, he ran out of time to write the text for the item but kept it in anyway and teases its role as a potential future content update. Now as for the old key, it is unobtainable but you can actually see it on the ground. According to the examine text, it is used to open the large old chest found on the third floor of the town's church. Now, in a previous video, I showed you how to get the cow-themed home teleport animation from Diango, but there's actually two more things that you can unlock from him with the proper code. Now, on top of the teleport animation, you can get the Runefest shield uh, with the code Runefest17, which is actually a pretty interesting and impressive looking shield. And you're also able to unlock the Premier Shield emote with the code Premier Club 18 These are available to anyone and can be done anytime with absolutely no requirements. You just have to run over to Diango and type in the code. The best ones are definitely the Home Teleport animation as well as the Runefest shield. Okay, coming in at number 4 is just kind of a quick tidbit. The longest name as far as characters go for an item in RuneScape is now the Rune Scimitar Ornament Kit Ceridomen, where the previous record was held by the Charge Dragonstone Jewelry Scroll at 35 characters. Now do you guys know the stone circle that is visible in Taverly with the druids around it? Now I really didn't think about this too much, well obviously it is based off of Stonehenge as visually it looks pretty much identical, but one thing I didn't know about Stonehenge is apparently it was actually built by Celtic druids, which makes a lot of sense when you have a look at the stone circle in Taverly as there are a bunch of druids walking around what obviously looks quite a bit like Stonehenge. I think that's a pretty interesting historical tidbit that they managed to put in, well I guess the druidic ritual quest. Now quite a while ago I remember watching a Mr. Mammal video and in it he managed to get a dragon full helm from a method I didn't quite understand at the time. What's really interesting is the Mithril Dragon is one of the only ways to get a Dragon Full Helm. However, on top of it being on their drop table, they also have an item called a Chewed Bone that they drop. And if you light a Pyre Ship with the Chewed Bone, you have a 1 in 250 chance of getting the Dragon Full Helm as a drop, uh, which has to be one of the more unique kind of drop methods or drop tables in the entire game as pretty much all of the other equipment is valueless, or at least in comparison to the Dragon Full Helm. I think initially I just thought that the Dragon Full Helm was just a straight up drop from the Mithril Dragons, which they are again, but the Chewed Bone is a secondary way to kind of get it. With these two methods combined together, it actually makes an effective drop rate of around 1 in 10,000 for the Dragon Full Helm. Now if you are an Ironman, you almost 
always will need to get level 75 woodcutting to get a magic log. Magic logs are used in a bunch of different quests throughout the game, so eventually you do need to get this woodcutting level. However, there's actually one other way to get a magic log beyond chopping it normally, and that is during the Legends quest. At one point, you were going to create a Yomi tree, and from that, you're actually able to obtain a magic log. Now, you can only do this as long as you have not completed the Legends quest, and you have to have at least gotten far enough in it to plant the Yomi tree. It is an extremely tedious process to get magic logs this way, but if you have a really low woodcutting level and you want to complete the desert treasure or maybe a few other quests and you just don't want to get that woodcutting level requirement, this is an alternative way to get the log, albeit extremely random and not efficient in any way. Now do you know when you go to Zanaris and your character will randomly shout out different sentences or different words? Uh, apparently, that is due to the Zanaris Choir. The Zanaris Choir is a strange event that only occurs while visiting the lost city of Zanaris. They work somewhat like random events, but their purpose is not to actually stop bots. However, if you do have the Zanaris Choir event going on and you do get a random event at the exact same time, they will follow you into the random event and continue to uh, say random sentences. For example, they will say things like, Are you going to craft cosmic rooms? Can we come too? Look at that outfit, can't you afford a decent one? We do hope we are not too annoying, as well as some other nonsense. The one thing that players don't actually do very much is putting items on a table. It's kind of a weird mechanic that nobody uses and it doesn't have a lot of practical uses behind it. However, one minor use is that by putting an item on a table, it will actually last longer than if you drop it on the ground. There are a few uses for this, mostly Ultimate Ironmen who need to do certain quests quickly. Now the reason that the despawn timer is longer for tables goes way back to when there was actually a lot of uh, scams to do with your player owned house. There were certain scams where players would be told to put an item on a table, however then they would be removed from the house by the host, and then the host would simply wait for the item to appear and pick them up. I believe this was a temporary fix. For a time, every world used to be a PvP world. The only safe areas were certain banks as well as Lumbridge. Now this was later changed to a dueling system where most areas were safe but you could challenge players to a duel. And from there it slowly transitioned into the wilderness into what we have today. Now in the Monkey Madness 1 questline, there is a part where you are transporting an enchanted gold bar. However, if you actually wear your monkey speak amulet, you can talk to the gold bar and it will say something like, I'm stuck in this horrible gold bar, which kind of implies that some sentient creature has been turned into a gold bar, which is kind of unfortunate. Also later in the quest, when you are fighting the jungle demon, there's actually an ape underneath the arena uh, where you fight the demon that you can talk to without having a monkey grigri, which is really interesting because I think that is the only monkey that has that feature. Did they just potentially miss this monkey or was he intended in some crazy future quest line? Who knows? Now in the Warriors Guild there is an NPC called Shinomi and their purpose in the guild is to tell you how to use the enchanted armor set training method. Now all of his text lines are actually from a book called The Book of Five Rings written by a famous samurai Kenzai, Miyamoto Masashi, and their instructions on how to follow the way of the warrior which is pretty thematic considering he is a warrior guild trainer. Now one interesting thing that you can do on Entrana is whenever you open a clue scroll there, you have a much higher chance of getting a god page or other non-armor items, and the reason for that is you cannot actually receive an armor piece on Entrana as you can't bring armor there normally, and that was to prevent you from uh, getting armor there where you're not supposed to. Not that there's much to take advantage of there with armor and weapons, but I guess it would uh, kind of piss off the monks. This can be useful if you are an Ironman and are really trying to complete a god book, or an ultimate Ironman who doesn't have a lot of inventory spaces and really needs to have a higher chance of getting the god pages. Now one thing I never realized until recently is that if you have the proper anti-poison or anti-venom in your inventory, you can actually click on your HP orb to drink the potion and cure your poison. It's kind of a weird quality of life update that I never knew about, and maybe it would be convenient in a few situations, but yeah, apparently it's been in the game for quite a while. Now when the old school RuneScape servers were initially launched, uh, we hit 50,000 online players after being up for only around 4 hours, and during the peak time of that day, the player count went up to 85,000, 
which was a really good start, but over the next couple of months, uh, player counts would dwindle as low as 3,500 players on at once, which is terrifying to think about. Had this game not gone in a different direction with updates or a less than ideal moderator team, this game definitely could have been dead. So really have to give props to everyone who worked on this game because in late 2018 we broke new records for player counts. What was it up to 150,000 players on at one time with the release of mobile? Completely crazy but still to this day we are getting 80,000, 90,000 players concurrently which is more than when the game initially started with all of the hype. Anyway guys that is going to be it for today's video. Those are 15 interesting facts you may not have known about old school runescape if you have any other interesting things you know about the game that not many people may know about leave a comment down below i'll try to include it in a future video and thanks for watching guys i always appreciate it and i will see you next time